Hi, I'm Jay Andrews with Laguna Tools. Today we're covering the PX series planers, specifically the PX16, PX20, and PX22 planers. Now these machines will arrive to your property in a crate on a pallet. The carrier will deliver it with a lift gate and a pallet jack and roll the machine in. When you receive the machine, have a look around the crate, make sure that there's no shipping damage. If you see any damage that could have caused some damage to the machine, make sure to note that on the carrier's receipt and then open the crate and get it in your shop and have a look over the machine. If you see any damage to the machine itself, give us a phone call so that we can go through and initiate a claim with the freight carrier. Now today we're gonna to do a setup on the PX16 planer. We've already got the PX planer out of the box and set up here in the shop. There's a few steps to do to get the machine set up, but as you can see, it comes largely assembled. The first steps are to go through and remove the accessory box and remove the plastic off the table and to start cleaning the table. Now that the machine tables are clean, it's time for the accessory box. There's not a lot of accessories in here since the machine is fairly completely assembled. One of the things that you'll find in here are the lift hooks. There's four of these lift hooks included in the accessory box. They mount to the front of the machine and these make it easy to lift the machine up using either a sling or a piece of pipe that goes across from one side to the other to get the machine up and off the pallet or to move it around while you're doing setup. If you don't need those, you can leave them off the machine. You'll also find the dust hood that will bolt to the back. You'll find some extra knives, the Sheer Tech knives. And then finally, you're gonna find a, uh, some batteries here and these will fit the digital readout that's on the front of the machine. Let's install the batteries. Right here in the front, the cover comes off. The batteries simply snap into the digital readout. It should light up as soon as you put the batteries in there. Go ahead and reinstall the cover. And now on to the next step. Now in the same bag that the batteries came in, you'll find four screws and an Allen wrench. And those are to attach the dust hood. The dust hood is ambidextrous, meaning it can be mounted with the uh, outlet pointing to the right or flipped over and having it pointed toward the left, depending on how your dust collection is set up in your shop. Now today I'm gonna install the dust port facing the right rear of the machine. The holes are at the back of the upper portion of the cabinet. Simply install the screws into the hole and run them in with the Allen wrench that's provided. Now the dust shroud that we just installed on the back is very heavy sheet metal. And it's that way because it also acts as a guard. If you had a problem with a chipped knife or something like that, it could shoot out the back. And because this is a nice heavy steel, it's not gonna come through the back and damage you. There are four screws on the back. We've got the two at the top, we've got two on the bottom. The two on the bottom will need to be removed anytime that you're opening the lid and doing a knife change. Now over on the side of the PX series planers, you'll see that there's a crank handle with a hideaway handle. That handle can be folded in if you're moving the machine and to keep it from protruding in the shop. And this is used to raise and lower the table. You'll see that there's a gauge on the front of the machine. There's also the digital readout for the height. Uh, just above that, you're gonna see that it is a two-speed machine, and this is the transmission. There's a neutral position that the machine is shipped in, and this can be moved either in or out to shift it from high range to low range. Make sure that you only move this knob while the machine is running. You don't wanna uh, shift this from low range to high range while the machine is in the off position. Now it's time to get your machine powered up. The PX series planers come with a junction box on the back of the machine, but no cord or no plug. So you're gonna go through and select your cord and select your plug. This has got a five horsepower motor, so we recommend a 10 gauge wire or better to go through and connect the machine. The choice of plug is yours. You can go through and set it up with either a straight bladed plug like this or a twist lock. Either one works fine. Today I'm gonna to go through and install the straight bladed plug. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. Let's get down to the junction box on the back and connect the cord. And the first step is to remove the rear cover at the electrical connection box. Next, remove the strain relief connector for the wiring. And this will install onto the plug. And finally, I like to get the 
wire terminals are ready to go here. We're going to connect to the white, the black, and then the ground lug. Those are ready to go. Now I've already prepared my individual wires with spade connections on the end. We're going to use two hot legs and a ground. The ground will be green and then the black and white are both considered hot on 220 volt power. So those can connect actually either way uh, on the power. Next, prepare your strain relief by inserting the wires through and sliding this down onto your power cord and get that out of the way. The next piece is the strain relief itself that fits into the fitting. Slide each wire through. One at a time is generally easiest and this is flexible to make it a little bit easier. Now that those are through I'll slide that down again onto the power cord so that that's ready to go. And then finally I'll slide this through the fitting that's going to go into the bottom of that electrical box. Again, I find it's easy to put these through one at a time so you don't clog the fitting up as they're going through. Now that those are in place, bring it down. Bring the strain relief plug in there. Give yourself plenty of slack right now. We're going to slide this into the bottom of the electrical box, make the connections, and then finally we'll bring this back up and tighten it in place. Now, anytime you're doing electrical work on the machine, make sure that it's unplugged and that you've got the plug visible in front of you. That way there's no mistakes. You're going to feed the wires through the hole in the bottom of the electrical box. We're going to connect the two power wires, which in this case are black and white, but those could be black and red or it could be a blue wire, but those will always be the two power connections. Those will connect to the white terminal and the black terminal on the back here. And then this is the ground wire. The ground wire will always be green or it'll have a wire that has a green stripe or a green tracer to it, and that's going to connect to the green terminal. Let's slide these through the power box. And before you make any other connections, make sure that you slide the ring that locks the fitting in place over these wires. I'll leave it loose right now, but I'll connect that again in just a few moments here once we have these wires in place. Slide that over and get it down out of your way. Leave plenty of room here to work. Let's go ahead and connect the white wire first. And again, these spade terminals make it really easy to make these connections. You can also do this with a ring style connection if you prefer that. We'll tighten this down. Next, I'll connect the black wire to the black terminal here. And then finally, the green or the ground will connect to the ground terminal that's up inside the box. Pretty simple connections, but if you're uncomfortable doing this, you can get an electrician to help you out with it. Now that the wires are tight, I do a little tug test to make sure that they're all nice and tight. Those are good. Finally, bring the fitting up to the bottom of the box and slide it through. Work that fitting nut onto the connection and tighten it down. If you need to put a wrench on that, you can. But these things tighten up pretty good by hand. Slide the rubber grommet with the strain relief up into place, into that fitting. And then finally, the plastic nut will secure everything in place. And you can hear that ratcheting as you tighten it down. And that's just biting into the cord itself to make sure that it's properly anchored. Give that a tug test. I don't have any movement on the inside. When I'm tugging on the outside, I know this is good. All right, now that I've got the machine wired up on the back, I've gone ahead and plugged it into the wall. I have power to the machine, and it shouldn't start right now because the e-stop, the emergency stop, is in the in position. Let's try it. So I verified that the e-stop works in this position. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Some of these are just a straight pull out and some you pull and twist a little bit as you're pulling it out. That'll mean that the machine is armed and ready to start. It should start right up and then I can check the off switch as well. 
powers up. It sounds great and it sounds really quiet actually. Let's go ahead and check the off button. I do these series of tests when I first start up a machine just to make sure that everything works so that when I need to shut it off, that I can shut it off properly. Okay, so we verified that the off button works. Let's start it up, check the e-stop. The emergency stop works great. Now I'm ready to go through and calibrate the planer. Calibrating the planer means that I'm gonna feed a board through that's already been jointed and flattened on one side. I'll put that side down, run it through the planer, measure the board for thickness, and then finally set the scale to hairline readout by adjusting it up and down to measure the uh, thickness of the board exactly. So we'll go through planer board, check the thickness, and then adjust the hairline readout. Now before we cut the calibration board, I want to open up the planer and show you the business end, something that we're really proud of, and that's the SureTech 2 cutter head system. I've pulled the bottom two screws out of the dust collection hood. Let's flip the latches, open this baby up. We're really proud of the SureTech 2 cutter head system that's in the PX series planers. It's a six row insert carbide cutter head. The carbide inserts are held in place by a special screw that has a T-step to them and it provides more clamping force than a traditional countersunk screw like you'll see on other heads. Each row is meticulously machined in between the knives and in between the rows and that does a few things for you. First of all, it provides better chip ejection to keep the machine clear of chips and shavings as you're planing and it also makes it run a lot quieter. You'll hear that as we start the machine up. The SureTech 2 cutter head is mounted in the machine using these massive bearings on either side and those go into these rock solid cast iron bulkheads on each side of the machine. Finally, to keep you safe while you're in here working with the knives and the cutters, there's a micro switch right here. The micro switch opens up anytime that the cover is open, it lets you work safely in the back of the machine. But to take that one step further, I like to unplug the machine from the wall anytime I'm back here with the cover open and working with the knives. I want to make sure that I'm perfectly safe. As you're closing the upper cover, depress the button that's on the side and latch it in place. The PX series planers feature industrial rollers to make infeed and outfeed easy. You simply pull out and lock in place using the lock knobs on the bottom of the cast iron table. The industrial rollers make it really easy to feed material through and they're not likely to scratch your material here since they have a durable coating on, each, on the outside of each roller. Now a few other features in the PX series planer are the feed rollers and these are great for feeding material back to the operator to put it through the planer again. You've got an ergonomic control panel on the front of the machine and finally a modern stylish cabinet that houses the entire package. Now we're going to calibrate the thickness indicator on the planer. The first thing that I'll do is I'll raise the table up using this handle and you'll notice that the table sets on four Acme threaded screws that raise the table up. Okay, I've got that close to my board thickness. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my board. Now I've already jointed a board so I have a nice flat surface on the bottom. The flat surface is gonna index the table and then we're gonna cut the top, measure thickness of this board, and then we're gonna set the side indicator here or the thickness indicator to match the thickness of our board. Ideally what I'm gonna to try to shoot for is about a half an inch on this board here, measure it, and then I'll set the indicator to match the actual thickness of the board. Let's go ahead and run this board through. The first thing I'll do is place it on the table and raise the table to where it's about a sixteenth of an inch to the feed roller. I've got it set there and now what I want to do is just kind of sneak up on that cut and get it just to flatten the top. Now that we're ready to start up the machine, I want to go ahead and make sure that I've got my safety glasses on, get the machine fired up and I'm going to engage the feed mechanism for this. This will start the feed rollers. There's a knob here on the side. You want to make sure that you only move this knob when the machine is running. Don't shift it when the machine is shut off. There's a fast speed and a slow speed. For calibration, it doesn't matter which one you have it on.
Now that I've got the board milled, I'm going to go through and measure it with a set of calipers and get a pretty accurate reading here. Okay, and I'm going to record this number. And then I'm going to set the thickness indicator to the same number now that we're measuring off of the machine before making any adjustments. So my reading is 0.625 here, and that's 5 eighths of an inch. I'm going to go down to the thickness scale and set it exactly at 5 eighths of an inch. All right, we'll just simply loosen up the two screws that hold the thickness indicator hairline readout. So we can adjust that to the 5 eighths of an inch that I was seeing on the caliper. There we go. Just lightly tighten one of them. Adjust, and then I'll snug it up. Now this is set exactly at 5 eighths of an inch, which is what our board was reading. Now let's set the digital readout. Setting the digital readout means you're going to select either inches or millimeters. Right now I've got it set to inches and you can toggle back and forth between inches and an absolute value by hitting this button right here. So I've got it set on absolute and in inches. I'll hold the calibration button here, push and hold until you see the ABS flashing. Now that that's flashing, what I can do is I can use the up and down buttons here to increase or decrease this value and you, you can push and hold the up or down button to have it travel fast. There we go, I've got it close. And I'm gonna sneak up here on that 0.625, so there's 0.605, and there we go, 0.625. Push the calibration button again here, and that'll freeze it so it's not flashing. You'll see it's 0.625. It also gives me the fractional inch here at 5 eighths of an inch. Now I've got both the thickness indicator and the digital readout reading correctly. All right, now it's time to put this planer to work for what it was intended to do, and that's to clean up lumber like this. You can see that this piece of wood here has got some checks in it. The surface isn't smooth, and it's got this nasty little step to it. I want to go through and make a pass or two through here, clean up the surface, and see what it can do. You can see just how smooth and nice that finish is right off the planer. And that's thanks to the cast iron frame, cast iron table, and the SureTech 2 cutter head system. Now, if you have any questions on the PX16, the PX20, or the PX22, give us a phone call at 800-234-1976, or look us up on the web at lagunatools.com.